finalizing, go looking over it again this morning. That's come to me. You know, there's no Pentecost bunny. There's no Pentecost gifts or anything. It's not secularized. And I only heard one mention of Pentecost this morning, and I think it was from the African-American preacher I saw on Fox News this morning reminding us about the, the love and of God pouring out the Spirit upon all people and all mankind. It's not been secularized. Pentecost was the beginning of the power of the Holy Spirit being available to all believers. I think you might, hopefully, you might remember last week the, the prelude to Pentecost. Talked a little bit about in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit did not inhabit people all the time permanently like it, after, it did after Pentecost. The, the Spirit of God would come on people. I gave you some examples Moses, David, Abraham, and others. As they needed to do something, they needed power in their life or something to do something. Now, Pentecost, the Holy Spirit is available to all believers in Christ. With the Holy Spirit in us. Think about that. And there may be a, I'm, I'm thinking this morning, there may be a part two and there may be a part three on this. The Holy Spirit in us. You know what that is? That's Pentecostal power. That's what it is. It was essential back then, when I'm going to read you some scripture in the second chapter of Acts, it was essential back then, it was essential all through the book of Acts, and it's essential today. Today though, some Christians fully, I mean some Christians fully embrace Pentecostal power. I'm going to talk about that word Pentecostal a little bit more. I know where you're thinking. Where's he going with this? I'll, I'll get to that part. Some people fully embrace Pentecostal power. I'm one of them. I, I fully embrace it. I've, you heard me say many times I'm a Methecostal. But some shy away from it. Again, I'll talk about that just a little bit. Shy away from it. I think, obviously, as a Pentecostal Methodist, I think all believers in Christ should fully embrace the Holy Spirit. Should fully embrace Pentecostal power. Now let's look, I'm going to look, let's read you some scripture about how it all got started. It's sort of like the Christmas story. This should be read every year at this time. It probably is. It's probably being read a million times uh, in, 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 pre in churches today on the day of Pentecost. Chapter 2. Uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through uh, 4. And when the day... Well, I mean, before I say that, remember last week I read you Scripture in chapter 1. It said, before Jesus ascended into heaven... He said, I want you to just to wait a little bit longer because the Holy Spirit is coming. Go, go to Jerusalem, get together, and just wait a little bit longer. Well, let's pick it up in Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly... There came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues of fire distributing themselves and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is pretty easy to understand. Not too difficult. They were together. Jesus had told them to get together on the day of Pentecost. It's Pentecost. They're together. And suddenly there's this great commotion. 
strong rushing wind. They're in a room now. Remember this. They're in a room. It was heard, and it seemed like there was fire on everyone's heads. And everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit. And they could speak and understand other languages. If you read on in, in the next few verses, you see there was people from all over the place that spoke different dialects, different languages. All of a sudden, somebody could speak a, a dialect or language that wasn't theirs, and they could hear somebody speaking in another one. What, they were all communicating through Pentecostal power. You know, this great commotion drew a crowd. And people questioned so what's going on here? Again, I encourage you to read on in Acts chapter 2. What's going on here? Some even accuse them of being drunk. Well, they were drunk on the power of the Holy Spirit, that's for sure. So they, I think he uses the word uh, drunk on sweet wine. And Peter said, no, 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 no. That's not what's happened. That's not what happened. He basically said, you know, prophecy of Joel is being fulfilled. They're not drunk. He even said, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. He told them that. He said, no, and they're not drunk. They've just received Pentecostal power. With Pentecostal power, Peter, Peter preaches the first sermon of the church. And 3,000 people were saved. The church began with Pentecostal power. Pentecostal power is still here today. Pentecostal power is the Holy Spirit. Now, I, this is the part of, 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 of everything I say, of everything that God put, told me to put down on a piece of paper here. I want you to get this if you don't understand this. Pentecostal power is the Holy Spirit living in and being active in a believer. Now that active in a believer can take shape in many different fashions. When somebody that again is, is relatively sort of a shy person says, man, I got, God's put something on my heart. I got to speak. That's Pentecostal power. That's what it is. Pentecostal power if you read on in the book of Acts, is the source of supernatural signs and wonders and miracles. You know, all kinds. And again, I may touch on some of that next week. I don't know the direction I'm going to go from here, but I'm sort of leaning in that direction. We like to hear about signs and wonders and miracles. I like to I like to say Pentecostal and I like to say power and you put them two together, yeah man, that gets me stirred up. Pentecostal power. Acts 5 12 says, at the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were taking place among the people. You know, Acts records many manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And the disciples and people just like you and I, just your average person going about their life, trying to make a living, taking part in the economy, having to put up with viruses and sicknesses and all that kind of stuff. You know, they had viruses back then and sicknesses and, you know, they prayed, they were healed. You know, Pentecostal power. Peter is the first character we see in the, in the book of Acts. I want you to think about Peter of the Gospels. You know, Peter was sort of a flip-flopper. Oh, yeah, you, you're the Christ. Oh, you're the great, you're the Christ. I know who you are. You know. And oh, yeah, Lord, I, let me walk on the water. Then he takes his eyes off of Jesus and he falls under the water and he 
Jesus says, oh, you have little faith. <coughs> was quick to come to Jesus' defense in the Garden of Gethsemane. But then, after Jesus was arrested, he cusses him. He said, I don't know that man. I'm not associated with him. Peter goes off and cries. But you see a different Peter in the book of Acts. Pentecostal power transformed Simon Peter, the fisherman. We read a tragic tale of Stephen. I can't, a few chapters on. Most of you know the story of Stephen. If you don't look, I, I can't find it right now. But it, the story of Stephen. He was about to be stoned to death for his faith in Christ. I mean, people were standing there with rocks in hand. And he preaches again another sermon, another sermon with Pentecostal power. And he says, yet before he, he, they started throwing the rocks at him, he had a vision of heaven. And he saw the resurrected Christ. My goodness, probably the best example of Pentecostal power is Saul being transformed to Paul. If you've been in any church anywhere, any time in your life, you've had to hear of the Apostle Paul the great missionary of the church, the great, the, the most prolific writer of the New Testament and one of the most prolific writers of, of all the Bible. Christian doctrine that we have, Christian theology that we have comes from the Apostle Paul. And how did Apostle Paul, did Apostle Paul think that up? No, it says he was caught up into the third heaven. He was caught up and he received the vision. He saw a vision of, of Christ on the Damascus road. And he was transformed from the murderer to the missionary that we all know. And that was through Pentecostal power. You know, Pentecostal power is just not for famous people or famous Bible people. It's not. Now, these people are famous. They're not Bible people. Well, people in the Bible. John Wesley. I mean, you know, as a Methodist, as a Pentecostal Methodist, you know, John Wesley, they estimate, preached about 80,000, 80,000 sermons. And he probably wrote that many pages or even more. You know, I've studied John Wesley. And you have a great appreciation for it. But what he did was did it through Pentecostal power. Wesley was a Pentecostal. Some Methodists might not like me saying that. But he was a Pentecostal. Billy Graham. Now Billy Graham didn't belong to Pente a quote what we would call a Pentecostal denomination. But look at the impact Billy Graham had on the world. How did Billy Graham do that? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. And what is the power of the Holy Spirit? The power of the Holy Spirit is Pentecostal power. Pentecostal power was a catalyst of great revivals in history. Methodism, Wesleyanism, whatever you want to call it, started as a revival. Wesley was preaching outside to people that felt uncomfortable coming into a church. Thousands of people, throngs of people would come. It sparked a revival in England. It spread to America, to the, to the frontier of America. The Great Awakening, as some call it. A revival now, I forget 
there's been a couple of them. It might have been the 17, 1800s. I'm, I'm sorry, I just can't remember it. <coughs> Pentecostal power enabled people to spread the gospel throughout the whole world. You know, it's still being done today. As I was putting this together and I was thinking about the day knows both of them very well and, and, and both of them the priest here, Rick Goodspeed and Gary Vanover are men filled with Pentecostal power. I've known them a long time. I mean, they're going to, to Africa and, and difficult places to go and teach it. Starting a seminary, and they're putting, they're helping them get fresh drinking water. You know, we take for granted fresh drinking water. They're helping them put in wells, and when they do that, they're preaching the gospel to them. They're and they're doing that through Pentecostal power. Sadly. Some Christians are afraid of Pentecostal power and say that signs and wonders are not for today. I'm not going to name any denomination or any group of people, but praise be to God, this church is not that way. I've told this story numerous times, and I'll tell it again because it comes to mind and I looked under the pulpit, one of the, in, in the little, under the pulpit, in the little compartment. Go up and look in the front of the pulpit. There's a little compartment, a bunch of junk in it. You got all kind of throat lozenges and other kind of stuff. And then, But the, the point is, I said, what's all this olive oil doing in here? And I figured that out pretty quick, quickly because I'd been around Pentecostals and Charismatics. I said, that, somebody's been some, doing some anointing. You know, that's Pentecostal, anointing people with oil and praying for them. In this time of physical distancing, you know, we've not done much touching. Josie come up to me this morning and told me of a prayer need. And I know that lady well enough. She's a woman of great faith. And I just touched her lightly on the head and prayed for her. You know, that's Pentecostal power. That's Pentecostal power. It can be as simple as that. You don't have to touch somebody. The Bible tells us that. And I keep telling Martha where Paul talks about uh, in, uh, greeting each other with a holy kiss. And Martha and I have been debating, and I keep telling her, when all this is over, I'm going to greet you with a holy kiss. Martha, I am one day. You just wait and see when you don't expect it. That's going to happen. <laughs> Can I get an amen or a honk or something like that? <laughs> the Pentecostal power is for today. Let me repeat that. Pentecostal power is for today. There's nowhere that I found in the book of Acts, and I know it fairly well, that said it was limited for that time. Nowhere. Does it say that that I can find? I challenge you to show me where it's just, it says it's not for today. Pentecostal power is for today. It's for all believers in Christ, not just Pentecostals. Now, we do have our Pentecostal brethren and the two denominations that come to mind, and God bless them, Church of God and Assemblies of God. Their quote, Pentecostal denominations. And there's some other Pentecostal holiness and what have you. But you know where they you know where they all come from? Their roots come out of John Wesley. He's come many considering to be the grandfather of Pentecostalism. You know, Pentecostal power enables us to get through tough times and to use the gifts of the Holy Spirit for ministry. That's Pentecostal power. When a life gets changed, a person gets saved, a person gets baptized, that's Pentecostal power. I've seen it many times here on Wednesday nights and on Sunday morning. And God, we look forward to continue to do that. It 
in ministry, preaching. God, Lord, forbid to me that I ever allow, don't allow me to stand in this place and preach without Pentecostal power. I like to think that every message I bring is done with Pentecostal power. Even with the faults that are in Blaine Spence, Pentecostal power can overcome those faults. And teaching, serving, wisdom, discernment, intercession, healing, and tongues. Oh man, people freak out on that. Pentecostal power is also the source of divine joy, peace, hope, and love that we emphasize so much at the Christmas season. And Paul tells us in Romans 15, 13, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit by the power of the Holy Spirit in other words with Pentecostal power the power is of the Holy Spirit is here for all who believe in Jesus Christ it is your Pentecostal power it's not Blaine Spence's it's not ferns. It's not hobies. It's everybody's Pentecostal power. It, it, it's this church's Pentecostal power. It's your Pentecostal power. Use it. Use your Pentecostal power as you have been doing. I pray that you continue to do. Father, I pray. that we would, we would walk in Pentecostal power. That we would embrace it. Father, out here in the open, I don't know what difference it makes, but I pray that your Spirit would fall mightily upon each and every person each and every family, each and every family that's represented here, no matter what they're going through, you would endow them with your Pentecostal power. You would fill them with the Holy Spirit. And that every day would be Pentecost. <laughs>